Now we go. Okay. This is Harmony Springs Elders meeting on the last day of September, 2020. Let's start with a word of prayer. Would you join me? Loving and gracious God, uh, today again, we give you thanks, especially in Ohio on a nice fall day, we give you thanks for your creation around us and for a little bit less humidity and uh, change of seasons. It's nice to, especially in 2020, see things changing a little bit. We continue to ask your guidance and direction for us as represented leaders of Harmony Springs that you might continue to speak to us and guide and direct our conversation so that we might follow in the direction that you would have us go and in your calling. Thank you for each person here tonight and for those uh, who couldn't be here and maybe watching later, we give you thanks for uh, this amazing congregation of people that are trying to do our best to be together as one and serve you in the meantime. Thanks for how you are working in our lives and in and through Harmony Springs. In your name we pray this, amen. Uh, all right, our agenda tonight is semi-short, so hopefully we should uh, be able to cruise through some things we need to discuss. Uh, the first is that I can report to you that Debbie and I were amazed that uh, the folks we discussed to present to you tonight as nominate nominees uh, all said yes uh, so far. So uh, except for one who sort of uh, said yes preliminary and is uh, thinking about it as Sue Franz, but we are hopeful that she's going to uh, give us an official yes here soon. So. I sent you an email earlier today with those names. Uh, and just to go through them with you, uh, we have Chuck transitioning out and Dennis agreed to serve as chair of the trustees starting in 2021, which I'm sure Shannon's excited about. I see that look in your face, Shannon. Uh, <clears throat> and, oh, he'll do a good job. And then, uh, in addition to uh, four trustees, we also have Walt Ho who agreed as Carol Zumstein is rotating out. She was an elder for, was it four years, Debbie? And then she agreed to be a trustee to roll over into that. So she's been on leadership for a lot of years and uh, wants to take a little break. So we understand that. And then on the elder side, uh, we have uh, Sue Franz is the one who's still yet to officially give us a yes, but uh, we hope that she will. And Jenny Murphy is the other one who uh, recently retired and has more time on her hands. And before coronavirus, I remember on a Sunday, she told me she'd love to jump in and volunteer uh, with the church whenever we needed her to. And I've been tapping her for some help with uh, working with some folks that we have at Harmony Springs. And now as an elder, uh, she agreed to do that as well. So those are, the nominees and then i put in that email our continuation of for those of you thank you who uh debbie checked in with and agreed to continue on rolling over uh into the next year just for informational sake i guess uh debbie correct me if i'm wrong as i'm going through some of this but uh the when we redid our constitution and bylaws we have sorry you're fine uh, we have uh, essentially are asking people to serve two-year terms, and then uh, we can recheck in with those folks to see if they want to continue on for two years, so four years at a time, and then uh, we just ask people to rotate off to take a break there. We continued Carol. We kind of made an exemption for Carol because there's nothing that stipulates you can't roll over from being an elder to a trustee. and. An, uh, and in the transition year, we were she was involved in the process, design process with the building. So last year, if you remember, we thought that was important. But I think that we have finished that up enough, and I'm sure she'll still be involved in uh, the building decisions as well. So uh, there you go. So uh, we can. I'm open to any thoughts you have on all of that, and then. I guess we just need to officially say that we want to bring that slate of nominees to the congregational meeting, which happens on Sunday, November 8th, our annual meeting uh, for the congregation. Thoughts? Joel? Yes. 
I'd like to add that um, Jenny Murphy and Sue Franz are um, being nominated as uh, new elders because Janice Cuckler and Bill Weekly uh, would, I don't know that you mentioned that, but they are the two elders that would like to be finished uh, this term and are moving off of the, uh, the elders group. So that's um, the two new ones coming in and the two that have served are going off. Thank just you. Wanted, Good catch. Yeah, I forgot to wanted, mention that. Appreciate it. All right. I am not sure uh, what's going to happen with the church with two Getzes on leadership. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. It's either going to be we, really good or really bad. I don't know, Sharon. We've done two Blanchards, so, you know. That's, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, all right. So if you are okay with those suggestions that uh, we're coming to you with you tonight, I guess uh, we're going to practice our voting for the annual meeting too. So uh, maybe thumbs up, give me a thumbs up for vote so we get you uh, or down if you disagree, I guess, whichever. Okay. Uh, well, Joel, we'll have to do it one at a time. For the annual meeting, we'll have to ask for all those in favor, thumbs up and do oh. a separate thumbs yes. down. Yes. yes, okay. Uh, so seeing all thumbs up, we'll bring that list to uh, the annual meeting, which is a good transition to the next topic. Uh, Debbie and I were starting to discuss today how we want to try to operate things to make them go as smoothly as possible for the annual meeting. Uh, and I guess that was my suggestion was to try to do it visually with thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, if any of you have participated in other meetings where people have voted, I'm more than uh, open to hearing suggestions but yes i think in particular that's one debbie would be uh have people thumbs you know just like we would the yay or nay i guess so thumbs up for yay and thumbs down for nay i guess right yes so when we approve nominations or approve budget um we'd have to ask for all in favor this time they won't be saying anything it'll be thumbs up or those opposed thumbs down um, the other thing we need to figure out is the best way for people to indicate that they'd like to speak or ask a question or uh, that kind of thing uh, that, you know, we could easily handle in an in-person meeting, but uh, we would need to take care of uh, virtually if people have questions or amendments or whatever uh, suggestions. I did have a thought about the thumbs up and thumbs down thing. Um, what about those people that are calling in and aren't using video? What yeah. should we have them do? Yeah. Uh, that is a good question. We could call out the last two numbers of the phone number that is logged in because they're, I've never seen the same two numbers. Um, so we could call out or even do a roll call at the beginning. So these two, who's 095, who's 61, who's yeah. and we can take a little list and make sure we know who's who. And then when the time comes, if it's okay with them, you know, we can take a one by one. Uh, I mean, otherwise it's going to be really noisy. Right. Yeah, that's probably true. There's probably only going to be two, you know, a few people at a time that would be calling in. But if we could figure out who's who. Maybe at the beginning, uh, we can ask which is which number and just ask them after we've done the thumbs up, thumbs down, and then add them together, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I figured it wouldn't have been a lot. I just thought we should, you know, make sure yeah. that we yeah. know what we're doing beforehand. Right. Can the phone caller send text? What's that, Dick? Can the phone callers do a text? Uh... Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, depends on if we have people who, I'm thinking about the folks who call in at, on Sundays. Some of those folks would be able to text, I think, or do text. We might have one or two, depending on who's who signs in, who don't text as easily. I have a question, because I know, like, I've done calls, group calls at work, and, like, I am, like, so nervous about like messing around with anything else that I don't like doing more than one thing when I'm on there, you know? So uh, 
I'm, depends on the person how savvy they are with their phone. But I know I have a hard time doing that personally. Okay. <laughs> I think you're muted, Chuck. You're trying to. Sorry. Sorry. There you, you go. Your visual eyes, and you say, Are there any opposed? And if you hear something, then you would uh, say, All opposed, please speak up. That's true. That'd be a pretty efficient way to do it, I guess. Did you catch that, Debbie? You're getting phone calls again. What are you, you running uh, telemarketing over there, or what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they just pour in, and I usually rely on John to grab the phone right away, you know, when I'm on a meeting like this, but he was out picking up a curbside dinner for us, so um, he wasn't available on the first one, and the second one, he didn't <laughs> grab it. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, and I didn't want to take the phone off the hook because I thought if he's out there and he had to call me because of something with the order, then I'm, you know, we're sure. done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think Chuck has a, a good idea uh, that we can do thumb, thumbs up for um, all in favor, but then all opposed, um, people can put on their mics and say um, no or nay or whatever. Right. Uh, and that way we can assume that the phone callers um, are in favor unless they unmute themselves and, and as Chuck said, make noise, make make a sound and then maybe we can try to determine how many of those uh were opposed uh compared to what we counted as the um in favor that makes sense but then I, you, go ahead yeah one other thing i think i mean i don't know this for sure but i think some of the people who do call in are some of our older folks like um, Pat Wilson and Carol Blystone. And I think they're doing well just to call in. Uh, I don't think we can assume they can figure out how to go off that screen, text in what they want, you know, kind of thing. Right. Um, so that, that might be hard, although for those who can easily do that, that's another solution certainly to text to you, Joel, maybe, or, or to me, what what their uh, preference is. But um, yeah, we just wanted to kind of figure this all out, obviously, before it happens to right. have all the scenarios worked out. Uh, the only other thing I was thinking was that when we, for each motion that we have, I mean, we can, the appropriate person can read it and then we open it up for a discussion. So uh, we just want to tell people I guess, how to let us know that they want to speak or ask a question. So uh, I don't know, I guess in this format, it would either be uh, to type something over in the chat to say they want to make a comment or I don't know, raise their hand or something like that. And hopefully we can visually see them. And then I think for phone callers, same thing. If we said, are there any comments at this time? You know, phone callers unmute yourself. Right. Then everybody would get a chance to verbalize, you know, questions or whatnot. Yeah. But I like the hand raise too, you know, for visuals. Okay. Yeah, I think it could go either way. If if people are visual and you know, now that uh, Google Meet has expanded the number of tiles we can have and we'll probably be able to see everyone. Uh, a hand raise for asking a question will probably work just fine and uh, we can call on the person. But if for some reason, you know, that's not working for them, they can also uh, text in the chat uh, portion, I think. I think we'll be able to cover it that way. And as Jen was saying, you know, for phone callers, maybe we could make a specific time for if you are a phone caller and you have a question or a comment, will you unmute now and, and you know, talk so that yeah. um, we'll make it a specific time so that they're not trying to talk at the same time somebody we've called on who's raised their hand because we can see them. You know, just to cut down on the overlaps and, and confusion maybe, I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that makes sense. And what I was thinking was that, 
you know, just like we have when we're in person, uh, I'm still planning on asking Donna if she'll put together the slides so that as we're going over each thing, you know, yeah. budget and all that, we, people can be looking at it on the screen at the same time. Uh, so if we're all presenting and, uh, you know, there's information you want to be shown, you just tell Donna you want that just like you would if we were in, you know, in person. Uh, but maybe we can make a slide or two that just says all of this right at the beginning, just to say, since we're doing it virtually, here's uh, how we want to go about doing it. So we could kind of give that as at the beginning of the meeting, I guess. Okay. Any other thoughts, comments on that as we prep for the annual meeting? All right. Uh, Debbie, do you want to give us a little bit of an update on the prayer team and activities? Yes. Um, we have put together a prayer team. It's myself and Jen, uh, and then also Liz Eiler and Sue France. And um, this was a part of uh, our ministry teams that we wanted to uh, kind of get in place uh, going forward with um, as we build the church. And uh, there were different um, activities we thought we should have some special ministry teams for. Um, the prayer activities are following after the uh, book that leadership read uh, by Sue Nelson Kibbe, um, the uh, Floodgates, Holy Momentum for a Fearless Church, and the importance of prayer. And we really um, wanted to lay a spiritual foundation for what we are doing with our building. And so we began the 729 prayer. I hope uh, that everybody's remembering that uh, and participating. I know for myself, I already have our mission statement memorized, which is a good thing after all of these many times saying it over and over. Um, and so, and I think repetition is a great thing because uh, you internalize things more when it comes easily to you, I think, than when uh, prior to that, I was having to look at the page and remember, you know, all of the wording. But uh, anyway, I, I want us to continue um, encouraging our congregation to participate in that 729 prayer. And then the new prayer activity is beginning this Saturday, uh, October 3rd at 10 o'clock, prayer on the property. Um, and the prayer team has uh, put together um, kind of a, uh, a planned a prayer activity, but yet it will be open-ended because we will invite those who attend to offer prayers if they so uh, desire uh, so that they can be involved as well. But we plan to focus on um, some specific topics when we do the prayer on Saturdays. We're going to pray for the property, the building, the workers, our community and neighborhood around the church, uh, those who are seeking and will come, uh, not just to maybe Sunday worship, but maybe they will just be coming into the building to use it for a reception or a birthday party. Uh, we want to pray for all of those people and then pray for the congregation of Harmony Springs. And um, our plan is that on Saturdays at 10 o'clock, um, we will meet at the property. We'll get a chance to see the progress of the building. And we will pray for those specific uh, areas as we meet with a prayer leader who will guide the prayer. But as I said, with the, op um, the opportunity for those who are gathered to uh, offer a prayer if they would like uh, for any of those specific areas. Um, the plan is to park on the, the big uh, driveway that we have, the big stone driveway. And if it's nice, um, sit out on a, a lawn chair or lean against your car. Um, we'll use masks and social distancing as needed. And if it's a terrible rainy day, we can still go down or just so blustery cold, we can't sit out. We can still come down and meet together and know that we're all praying together. And we'll have a, a simple handout sheet to uh, guide people through the prayer. 
Um, the people, I think, oh, I already mentioned who's on. So to start us off, um, Jen and myself and Liz and Sue will each take one of the Saturdays in September or in October to be the prayer leader. Uh, and then beyond that, we welcome anybody who would like to join in and uh, do that, or if you just want to come and be a part of it. But I hope elders in particular and leadership uh, will hopefully find some Saturdays that they can come. I realize people's schedules, you might not be able to come all the time, but um, I hope you'll make an effort to uh, be there occasionally to be a part of um, this prayer time. And as always, if people can't show up at the property, they're most welcome to pray at their homes during that time on Saturdays at 10 o'clock. Jen, do you think that covers it pretty well? Oh, got a thumbs up. Okay. Affirmative. Thank you. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Those were the big things. Uh, you know, a few other things that were coming to mind that uh, we've been doing, which are kind of cool. Uh, last night, uh, Terry and Debbie led a few folks in uh, – bringing them into the fold on the virtual music project and going through that. Uh, so we're going to continue making progress with that. And uh, a lot of the other things we're doing, we have kids meeting uh, at church on after church on Sunday for uh, mm -hmm. their time. Debbie, the videos that you sent last week actually worked really well from our uh, side. All the kids all sang along. It was uh, great. Good. I I just have to ask: Did they like John being a part of the video? Yeah, I think they did. It was kind of neat. Good. Okay. Uh, what else? Anybody have anything else they want to uh, talk about or bring up tonight? Yeah. I was just going to mention that the virtual music thing that we had last Sunday was just truly excellent. Oh, thanks, Dick. Yeah, I think uh, I am just so impressed with Terry's ability to learn that and put it all together. And uh, I think the timing has been right. I hope that uh, the transmission of the music, since we're playing the videos during our Google Meet, has been uh, a little bit better lately. We've been tweaking that a little bit. So, uh I can't wait to see what else he comes up with. He said he uh, he kind of just purposefully made it pretty simple on this first one with just the boxes, but there's a lot of other things he can play with and options he can do, I guess, with that. So especially as we add more people to it, it's going to be kind of neat to see uh, how that comes together. But yeah, just being able to like see everyone's faces and to hear the voices together, it's pretty neat, wasn't it? All right. Anything else? Um, I don't think so. Uh, it might be a record for the shortest uh, church meeting ever. <laughs> well, I was going to say that at the beginning, when you and I, you and I were texting back and forth, that uh, the folks we asked for nominations. I think that was the. Yeah. Uh, easiest ask of nominations we've ever had. Usually you have a handful of people who say, you know, no way am I doing that first before you get to people who actually agree to it. So uh, I don't know. I'm hoping, like you said, Debbie, that's a good sign that maybe 2020 is starting to head in a better direction, but I uh, can't hold my breath on that one. 2020 has been quite the year so far, so we'll see. <laughs> No, I told Dennis that when he was debating about it. I said, hey, meetings are nothing like they used to be when you used to be like general board chair and all that. So he's like, okay, good. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the combination of virtual and that we just uh, have sort of right-sized how many folks we have on, I think, over the years has uh, contributed to that. So, All right. Very good. Uh, why don't I uh, say a prayer and then we'll go watch the Indians hopefully continue on in the series. I don't know. All right, here we go. Loving and gracious God, thank you for these people who have logged in tonight and 
our uh, amazingly leading Harmony Springs through this uh, coronavirus pandemic and building a building and everything else that's going on. I give you thanks for their spirit and your spirit that allows us to be flexible and to take things as they come and uh, to make the best of them as you call us to do so. Loving God, keep us safe uh, in our own homes and as we live and work, keep us safe, bring us back together again soon. In your name we pray all of this, amen. 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 All right, well, good night. Thanks everybody, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.